Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambo channel. My friends, the XRP empire continues to grow real world utility taking hold, even though, of course, in 2022, as it stands today, people don't sufficiently value utility, but that's commonplace in nascent industries. So that won't last forever. Eventually, the money's going to flow where to, to cryptocurrencies that are solving real problems for real people. That's my investment thesis, that utility matters and will win the day. Long term, that's what I think matters. Now, in the short term, yes, of course, I recognize the whole market moves in tandem, and it's a bunch of uh, emotional, useful idiots causing volatility. And you know what? I'm appreciative that that exists as well, because part of my short term strategy, at least for uh, you know this, this market cycle, is uh, they're just counting on emotional people to cause extreme volatility. So even though that's negative when it goes to the downside, the trend's still up, and I'm waiting for a euphoric blow-off top for altcoins. I do believe that alt season's coming at some point. So in the short term, yeah, strategy a little bit different, but I love seeing this stuff because this is real adoption of XRP and almost zero cryptocurrencies are used for anything in the real world. Um, also, I've got a little add-on for you. Uh, just a video made just, just uh, last night, literally, it was about um, billionaire Mike Novogratz, who runs a crypto hedge fund he founded called Galaxy Digital. While he does not like XRP, and he doesn't mince words when it comes to that, he's, um, what are the words that he used for us? Um, uneducated, I think is what he said, we're uneducated investors. Uh, he's called the XRP holders uneducated investors. And uh, he's, he's, he just, he detests XRP. He doesn't even think he doesn't even really good have uh, to generally anyway have good things to say about Ripple the company, even though he has invested in them in the past. I don't know if he's still a holder of Ripple Equity, but um, I made a video where I was highlighting. Oh, well, this is rich, isn't it? Criticizing XRP, one of the only cryptocurrencies on the damn planet that actually does anything. Yet he, while the, while saying that ah, doesn't make sense, I, I think XRP is going to underperform. He he literally said that too. Uh, he's like, yeah, it makes sense to invest in Luna though which is a cryptocurrency that within the last month or so, well, actually it was a little over a month, it hit its all-time high a little shy of $119. It even um, was above XRP in terms of market cap. It has since then, within the last week and a half or so, it has since then gone to zero. And by the way, this is after he got a tattoo of Luna on his left arm. So as far as who it makes sense to, to uh, listen to in terms of investments, eh, it's kind of a black, uh, black eye on his investment strategy, I'd say. But he is, uh, and he, he vanished for like the last week and a half or so that this has been going on. He's just vanished. Well, finally today, coincidentally, one day after I put up my video, I, I probably nudged him right now. I'm kidding. Uh, finally, he had something to say on all this. So I'm going to share that as a little follow up here. But uh, I do want to be clear at the outset. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice. And you definitely should not buy or sell anything because of anything I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos about crypto-related topics, but just as a hobby and just for fun. And there are multiple stories on this. In fact, here's a headline from you today. Ripple to set up a new on-demand liquidity corridor between EU and Mexico via new partnership. And here's another story from Finance Magnates covering the same thing. And I'm actually going to run through this one. Blockchain and crypto solutions provider Ripple announced a partnership with Fincy, an online global money transfer provider based in Lithuania, today. The collaboration will assist the business-to-business -business payments through RippleNet's on-demand liquidity, a service that leverages XRP for crypto-enabled efficient cross-border payments. So I'll just pause a note here. It's glorious to see stuff like this, and it doesn't matter how many stupid-ass haters are out there saying that XRP doesn't make sense, or it's centralized, or this or that, and it's not centralized, of course. It doesn't matter how many people scream, they can scream until they're blue in the face, and it doesn't matter, because real businesses on the planet are becoming clients of Ripple using on-demand liquidity technology every single day to move XRP around the planet as a bridge currency, converting from one fiat currency to another. So screen totally blue in the face how XRP doesn't make sense. Try and make it go to zero. You're going to fail in a free and open market. And this is what's happening here. You know, because if you're one of these people that says it doesn't make sense using XRP as a bridge currency, oh, okay, well, tell that to the dozens of Ripple customers that disagree with you and explain to them how you know something that they don't know. Anyway, the piece continues. The partnership has opened a new market for Ripple as Fincy has become the first partner of the blockchain company in Lithuania. Known for its digital adoption in the financial sector, Lithuania is one of the fastest growing fintech, mar fintech markets in Europe. Uh, the collaboration will enable the clients of Fincy to make fast and convenient payments between Europe and Mexico. And here's a quote from their CEO. 
We're excited to be working with Ripple to make it easier for Fency customers to move money around the world. We share the same fundamental goal of removing the hidden inefficiencies affecting international payments. What's more, the savings and operational improvements we'll achieve by using Ripple's on-demand liquidity will allow us to put money back into the business and enhance our offering to our customers, end quote. Mic drop, that's it. So XRP haters out there, it's screaming till you blue in the face. You tell this customer of Ripple why they're, why they're wrong and they're a paying customer of Ripple and how it's not actually benefit, benefiting their company or their customers. You go ahead and explain that. And this is just one use case. There are additional use cases for XRP. That's why this is all just that much more astonishing. And by the way, I'd also like to point out, uh, upon the news of this breaking, this positive news for XRP and Ripple specifically, the price of XRP did absolutely nothing. It did not respond to this positive news, which is par for the course. I'm not even complaining. I'm just pointing out something that is normal. This is how it's been the whole time I've been in this space. And I, the reason I wanted to highlight that, you may recall that there was a Dr. Albert Metz hired by the SEC in the SEC versus Ripple case, hired, paid over 600, or no, it was $600 an hour he was paid to create a 100 plus page report that allegedly proves that if not for Ripple, the company existing, XRP would never be over two cents. Yet here we have a, another example, a shining example of positive news and the price doesn't go up. But it, it, it doesn't go up. It, it, it doesn't go up because of positive news. It doesn't go down because of negative Ripple news. XRP follows the price action of Bitcoin. So I thought I'd just point that out. Here's another real world example. And they pay this guy tax, taxpayer money, $600 an hour to make this bogus report, which is being rebutted quite strongly by Ripple's experts. But man, what a, what a ridiculous position to hold in the first place. Uh, and now take a look at this headline from February of 2020. So this is before the SEC versus Ripple lawsuit. <clears throat> Just want to point out the headline. Bitcoin best bet in crypto, XRP will underperform, says Mike Novogratz. So that's a headline from February, the guy that ended up going uh, heavily into Luna, which ended up going to zero. He thinks XRP bad, despite utility, real world adoption, bad, definitely bad. But Luna, which some are arguing is an actual Ponzi scheme, uh, that makes sense. That makes sense to him. Okay. That didn't go so well for him, did it? And XRP actually, by the way, was performing quite well at the end of 2020, which is part of the time frame he was referencing back then. Um, it wasn't uh, until the SEC uh, attacked Ripple and, as a result, XRP holders effectively, that uh, XRP then tanked from its high that year, somewhere around 80 cents down to it got down to like 16, 17 cents. So it's because the SEC made the claim. Uh, that otherwise, that plunge otherwise would not have happened, obviously. It lines up perfectly, so that, that's a no-brainer here. But um, but, but here, here you can see, this is from uh, just this late this morning, Mike Novogratz tweeted out, after much thought, it's time to talk about last week and, more importantly, the weeks ahead. Uh, worth pointing this out, and this, this is shared by um, a number of people, including who's on your screen right now, XRP community member, XRP Crypto Wolf. Here's a picture of Mike Novogratz with his Luna tattoo on his arm. If you haven't seen this, it's worth taking a look. He uh, shared this picture uh, January of this year, actually. And XRP Crypto Wolf wrote, What happened to Novogratz is karma for talking S-word about the XRP community. The market will always humble everyone. And so here's what you today had to say about this. And their piece was titled, Mike Novogratz breaks his silence on Luna Collapse. Galaxy Digital CEO Mike Novogratz, one of the top proponents of the failed Luna token, has finally weighed in on the collapse of the token in a recent shareholder letter. Novogratz, who had been eerily silent on Twitter over the past week, claims that he was busy reflecting on the economy and the cryptocurrency industry. He says that the algorithmic UST stablecoin, which lost its peg earlier this month, was a big idea that failed. Novogratz says that Galaxy invested in Luna in the fourth quarter of 2020. In January, he proudly showed off his tattoo devoted to the high-flying cryptocurrency. After the implosion of the token, Novogratz was widely ridiculed for his over-the-top promotion of the cryptocurrency project. And here's a quote from what he ended up writing. I'm not going to go through this whole letter. It's on your screen right now. If you want to... like. Hit pause if you want to look at it, and I'll scroll down. You can hit pause again as, after I scroll down. So if you want to check it out, read the whole thing, do it. Um, so here's the second page. So you can pause there. There's page two. 
Um, I just don't feel like it's necessary to go through the whole thing to share the idea. I don't need his excuses here for this. And then here's page three. You can pause here also if you want to take a look at this. Um, I just wanted to share the idea of what happened. But, um, yeah, it's not a good week to be Mike Novogratz, you know? <laughs> Definitely not good. But here's a quote from uh, from what he, he typed up there. He wrote, My tattoo will be a constant reminder that venture investing requires humility. That's the quote. Uh, so I, I don't know how much of his investors' money was lost as a, res as a result of investing in what some are purporting to be an outright Ponzi scheme. Some are, are, are saying it actually is. Um, but, but either way, it had to have been a massive amount. And allegedly, he did take profits along the way. He did state that in his letter as well because he said that's what they do with all their investments. So presumably, and he said this applies to, to, to Luna, so must have taken something at least. But man, this probably hurts. Peace continues. The price of the governance token peaked at $118 before collapsing to overall bearishness in the crypto market due to unfavorable macro conditions. The billionaire explains that the downward pressure on Bitcoin, the reserve asset on the Luna Foundation Guard Foundation, uh, I'm sorry, the Luna Foundation Guard Foundation, um, and UST withdrawals triggered a black swan event. The LFG didn't have enough reserves in order to prevent the disaster. So it's worth noting they had like 80,000 Bitcoin and they sold almost 100% of them and then plugged that into UST. And some people have pointed out that, look, the reason this crash started happening, the reason that Luna entered a death spiral in part, is because mar crypto markets are just tanking anyway. And then there's a mechanism, which I've already described in recent videos, so I don't want to get into in this video. But it, it did result in that death spiral. But the part that I wanted to add on, because I haven't really mentioned this before, people have pointed out that selling that much Bitcoin, if anything, is just going to tank the price of Bitcoin further to whatever degree. And I'm not convinced it necessarily made it. I'm just sharing an argument that people have made. Uh, they're saying that's additional downward pressure on Bitcoin. So if anything, uh, you know, selling Bitcoin pushes the whole market down. So if you're using that to plug UST, you're not preventing a spiral because the whole market moves in tandem. That's the argument that was being made. Now, as far as was that enough to actually materially move the market to the downside additionally, uh, that I don't know. Now, I think the whole Luna fiasco did because there were people just freaking out, panicking. What does this mean? It certainly had an impact, but as far as the actual sale of the roughly 80,000 Bitcoin, um, I don't have data on that, so I don't have an opinion. But some people have argued that, so I just thought I'd share with that, share with you that opinion. Um, anyway, peace continues. Although much ink has spilled on the topic, many still remain baffled by the rapid demise of one of the biggest blockchain projects that was seemingly too big to fail. Novogratz attributes the token's collapse to unforgivable global market conditions. <laughs> yeah. No, I wouldn't say that's it. I think that it was designed in such a way, because look, you understand, I'll just say this for those of you that may have missed it. The, the stablecoin UST was backed by Luna, which is a cryptocurrency, which is highly volatile. In what world do you think that makes sense? Like, maybe don't start there. How about that? You know, <sighs> whatever you think of the dollar, like with UST, it's backed by the dollar. And whatever happens in crypto, that that alone is not going to make the dollar crash. If the, like the government, horrible monetary policy. We could talk about that in a separate video. I've talked about that quite a bit over the years. I still think monetary policy for the dollar is very bad. But I'm just saying uh, it's going to take a lot more to get the dollar to just absolutely tank relative to other assets and other fiat currencies the world over. That's all I'm saying. So backing a stable coin with the dollar is way more secure than backing a stable coin with a highly volatile cryptocurrency called Luna that has only existed for a, a couple years or whatever it's been. That just doesn't make sense. But that's what they did. That was their starting point. Uh, no thanks. And everyone else that has tried this has either failed or they're about to fail. Anyway, uh, peace continues. The, the billionaire's advisors... Uh, the billionaire advises investors to build a diver diversified portfolio on crypto assets, which is precisely what Galaxy did. Despite the shocking collapse of Terra, Novogratz is convinced that crypto is not going away, but he also warns investors that the market will not head straight back. Well, super duper, but I just don't know how, like, who's going to look at this guy. He's like, XRP bad, real world adoption, Luna, Ponzi scheme, good. And it goes to zero. I just, what do you even do with that information, man? I'm not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Lambo.